Uh, this is actually just uh, just a, a uh, you know uh, addition to it, like four eight. It's four eight. Okay. Um, before you start with this particular lesson, I want you to go ahead and take a look at these two questions for me. Find the average of 6 and 12, and in the second question, ask, find the average of negative 4 and 14. These are actually very easy to work on. See if you can actually come up with the answer for me. Anyone with a good clue on how to find the average of two numbers? Can anyone tell me here? Yes, Yamna? You add the numbers together and you divide it by the number of numbers. The total number of items you have. Okay, fine. So in this case, you, we have only two numbers, so can someone tell me the process that you're going to be going through to find the average of 6 and 12. Yes? 12 plus 6 is 18 divided by 2 is 9. Okay, good, good. Can someone do number 2 for me? Tell me the process. I don't want the answers. I want the process. Uh, yes, Val? Which is? Wait, wait. 14 plus negative 4 is what? Okay, and which is? Perfect. Five. Okay, so we know that the basic of finding the average is at the total number of items together and divide by the total number of items. Is that true? So imagine if I have five numbers added together to find the average of the five numbers, you have to get the sum and divide it by five. Okay, now, uh, what's another word for average? You know? You learned this last year. Mean. Okay, mean, right? So, watch what happened, okay? If I take this out of context uh, for a little bit and show you this particular example, I'm going to use the same exact number, by the way. I'm going to go ahead and use 6 and 12. We already know what the answer is. Is that true? 6 and 12, I asked you to find the average. You said 6 and uh, 12 is 18 divided by 2, which is 9. nine. Imagine if I take the two values and plot these two on the line of... The number line. Here's my 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. So this is 6 and this is 12. This one calls. Okay. And, and, and we figure out that the average of these two numbers is where? Where is it? 9. nine. So I'm going to go ahead and plot that point right there on top of 9. What do you notice about the distance from this point to one endpoint? And to the other endpoint, we didn't notice. They are exactly what? Exactly three. The same. Okay? So you can kind of see that the average of the two endpoints will form what we call here a midpoint. I know it doesn't look like a point yet. Well, because it's on a number line, we'll have our formal point in a minute. But you can see the idea behind it, right? To find the midpoint, it's basically finding the average. And we know how to find the average, all of us here. Is that true? Yes, we do. Add the two, for example, I have two points, add the two, divided by two. Easy. I have three points, add the three, divided by three. But since we are only dealing with two points, we always will be dividing by two. By two. Okay, so how, this, how, how will this work? Let's pretend now that I have the following set of points. I have two points. I'm going to go ahead and drag this graph out and show you. Well, you're hiding a graph. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Can you tell me what the point is on this at this location? Um, uh, negative three, negative three, negative three, negative three. Okay, negative three, negative three. And I also have another point line right here. Can you tell me the location, please? Uh, positive five, negative one. Good. Positive five and negative one. So watch what happens. I'm going to go and connect these two points together using a line. And can you, anyone, estimate where that half point, I mean the midpoint is going to be? One negative two. Okay, so you said that it's around here somewhere, right? Yeah. Okay, so he guessed, his guess is one negative two. Now, of course, we don't want to be graphing all the time, right? If I just give you two points find a midpoint, I want you to be doing algebraically without having to graph and estimate it. Yes, estimating, gonna, estimating is actually a good tool to see where the point is supposed to be. But if you want to be accurate about it, you would start doing it algebraically. And how would do this? Well, let's, let's, let's start by examining how we find the average of two numbers. We take the two numbers and we add, add, 
average. Average. We add and then we good. Add divided by two. We add, we divide by two, right? To find the average. So, and I already explained to you the meaning of average. It's like the midpoint. So, like what happened? I have two point two endpoints. I have negative three and negative three. I have five and I have negative one. Is that true? Yeah. Watch what happened. Similarly to our slope, all you have to do is just go ahead and divide it to Q column, and then instead of subtracting this time, I add the two values. If I add them, what is negative three plus five is going to get you? Positive two. Positive two. What is negative three plus negative, negative one? Four. Now, once we're done adding, what's the last step we have to do again? I forgot. Divide by two. two. Ah, divided by two. Watch what happened. One negative two. We divide by two, and we get one, one and negative two. And guess what? Is that what we just guessed? Yes. There it is. And this is how we find the midpoint. We add, and then we divide by two. Uh, you see how simple that is? Yep. Okay, raise your hand if you like. I don't know how you got that. We're good? Wait. Yes. In, in the homework, like, will they show you those points? In the homework, they will tell you these are my two endpoints. Find the midpoint. So you just have to set up oh. the same process. So like, like, like if you, like if the one and the negative two one are there. And oh, yeah, they they'll ask you to find it. Oh, okay. okay, but I want to make sure you understand that. How did you know it was gonna be one and the two? Oh no, he was just taking a guess at it. He was guessing, and then we are actually verifying to see if that his guess is correct, and it is indeed correct. Right? And because we know that the midpoint is the point in the middle of the line, right? So we guess it's right here in the middle. And guess what? It is correct. But on your on your homework, you don't have to graph. All you have to do is just show me the exact point. But if you don't believe yourself, you can certainly graph these three points to see if indeed the midpoint is right in the middle. Okay? Yeah, the homework, oh like I said, I don't want to talk about the homework, like I said, but it will give you two endpoints and then ask you to find the midpoint. Okay. We're not done, by the way. I want you to walk through the process a little bit. Again, remember how we add the two points together. Once we're done adding, we... Uh, we divide by two. Okay, so you see the step, right? Yes. Okay, sir. let's do this quickly. Here we go. If I have, for example, I, I'm not going to give you the points on the line, on the graph. I'm just going to give you set. Okay, here's my first endpoint. The endpoint, BP for endpoint, is as negative 2, negative 7. The second endpoint is going to be at 10 and uh, negative 14, for instance. I asked you to go ahead and find the midpoint. How would you start again? Okay, so you would add. So I'm just going to quickly do this. What's the answer again? 5, 8, and then negative 21. Negative 21. And the next step? Divided by 2. And so that's going to give us what? Four. Four. What is the twenty one divided by two? Negative nine. Negative ten and a half. Negative ten and a half. You said. What does the end point and then the one on the bottom? End point also. This is midpoint. Okay. There it is. If you can leave it in fraction form, please do. Or mixed number is fine, but I don't want decimal. Too messy. Okay. Negative two point five looks prettier. Or uh, what is it? No, no, this is the ten and a half. Okay. Okay, any questions so far on this? Nope. We're good? Okay, so here's the, here's the last scenario that I want to give you. This is the backwards scenario. Okay, now notice I'm using the word backwards, okay? So keep that in mind as I show you this. For this particular problem, I'm going to give you a point right here. I'm going to give you another point which is sitting right here. I'm going to go and connect these two. Can you tell me the location of the green point? I can't. Someone? Negative one, negative two. Negative one, Or the red point? Two, two. Two, two. Okay, now, I'm going to go ahead and tell you this <laughs> that the green point right here is actually the end point, and the red point here is the midpoint. Okay. Notice what's happening. I give you the endpoint and the midpoint. What's missing in this case? The, the, end point. the other endpoint. So instead of giving you two endpoints and asking you to find the midpoint, I give you one endpoint and a midpoint. That means your other endpoint has to be sitting over here somewhere. Is that true? Mm -hmm. yeah, so if I kind of make a little a sketch, 
Like kind of estimated. I know that my other ten end point will probably sitting around here somewhere, right? Yeah. I know it's only an estimate right now, but we want to find out the accurate answers. It's not like how do we actually, you know, give the answer spot on without having to guess? Well, all you have to do is just go backwards a little bit and think about this. For this particular point, do we know the exact location yet? No. If we don't know the exact location, what do we use to represent a point? The variable. The variable. Which variable? X and y. y. Okay, so we know that we need to find these uh, the, the coordinate of this point. Is that true? And then just go back to the very basic again. Pretend now that we are finding the midpoint. How would you start? You add what? Adding and dividing. Okay, add and divide, right? So we're going to do this. There's this negative 1 and negative 2. That's one point. And the other one is? 2, 2. The other point is? X and Y. Is that true? Is that true? Yeah. You see that? Yeah. Shh. Okay. We add these two together, we're supposed to get some number here. Is that true? Yes. And then we divide it by two? Right? Once, we, once we're done dividing it by two, <laughs> we will get back what? I'm, wait, wait, wait. I'm just walking through the process of finding the midpoint. I add the two points, and then I divide it by two, isn't it? That's what we're doing. So what, if we divide by 2, what do we get? What should we get at the end if we one divide by, by 2? Huh? One one by over two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Listen. Shh. Pretend that I have some number over here divided by 2. What do I expect to have at the end? Something X. What are we solving for when we walk through this process? X and Y. Oh, you'll find the midpoint. Thank you. Did I ha do I have the midpoint already? Yes. Which is what? Two, so two. isn't it true that when I'm done dividing, I should have this? Yeah. yeah. So let's go back to this question. Shh, think, think. Something divided by two will give me this two, right? Two times so two. how do I get back this value? Two times four. Two. Well, four. Two so, so do you notice that you actually have to undo it by multiplying instead of dividing? So this is four and this is? Four. 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 Does it make sense? Yes. And look, look. All you have to do is ask this question. Oh, wait, if this is 4, that means negative 1 plus 1 here is 4. Uh, negative 3. Don't you subtract? Negative 1 plus what is 4? 3. Negative 3. 5. 5. Five. Five. And know. negative 2 plus what is 4? 6. 6. So that means my points could be 5, 6. Watch this. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Oh, my gosh. It is. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Wait, what's yeah, you probably didn't know that. I did not know that. I guarantee you. No, no, honestly, I would just do it a, a guess. Wait, that's awesome. That's I don't know. Okay. Why don't you yes. just measure the key? Can you just find the slope? No, this, this is not what the slope is all about. No, this is not slope. Sorry. Okay, but do you see the idea? If we're working backwards, you have to undo everything that you just did. Okay? So, let's try another one right here. So, pretend now. You guys ready for the next one? Yes, sir. Okay. Let's forget about graphing this point. Let's say I have an endpoint of negative 2, negative 7. That's one endpoint. I have a midpoint lying somewhere, and that midpoint is on negative 5 and 2. Okay, that's the midpoint. I need you to go ahead and find the other endpoint, and as we know right now, do we know the location of the other endpoint? No, we don't. We don't. So in place of that, what do we put? X and Y. Okay, so let's go back to the very basic of how to solve for a midpoint. Always start with that. What do we do again to set up the, the midpoint? We set up um, negative 2, negative 7, okay. and x, y. And x, y, right? So we add these two. And then, and then you put 0 over 2, 0 over 2. Okay, so basically, if we add these, we're supposed to have something over here and something over here, right? Yeah. And then once we have this value, what do we do? Divide by 2. And once we divide by 2, what do we have? After, yeah, exactly. After we divide by 2, we we'll have the midpoint, which is negative 5 and 2. Do we agree with that? Yes. So now you just have to go back in time and say, okay, so for me to get the midpoint, I have to divide by 2. So to get back to the original value, we have to? So we always divide by oh, 2. Oh, you have to multiply. Exactly. So backwards, right? So what do you think this value is going to be on top? 
Negative 10. And this one? Positive 4. Positive 4. You see how I got those? Yeah. I'm just undoing it. Because for you to get a negative 5 here, I have to divide by 2. Don't you have to undo it by multiplying? Yeah, because negative 5. All right? And then you can just go back and ask this question. Negative 2 plus what is negative 10? Negative 8. Negative 8. Negative 7 plus what is 4? 11. 11. Right? So my point is going to be at negative 8 to 11. Okay? Now, if you don't like the vertical adding approach, you can certainly write it as an equation. Negative 2 plus x is negative 10. What is x? You just have to solve it. Add 2 over, you get x equals 2, negative 8. That's how we got negative 8. Okay? We want to solve it that way as an equation. Okay? So what do you think of that now? Was that approach too difficult? Yes. Uh, no, nothing. Just out. Nothing. Okay. Any questions yet? No. So to really, if, if you see this already, it should be a quick process. All you have to do is set up the equation, I mean set up the, the addition problem, double up your midpoint, and plug it right back in here. See it? If you double up, don't you have these two values already? So you can actually skip this whole process in the bottom. And you can just find out what the missing value is. Okay? Can you quickly find the midpoint then? Yeah. Any question on this? Okay. Excuse me. I'm going to go ahead and stop this.